Ryzen Plus is officially out. The second generation CPUs are performing extremely well, and you're probably wondering to yourself, which one should you get, or should you worry about upgrading from the previous generation? Well, today we're going to be reviewing the 2600, the 2600X, and the 2700X. Now, we're not reviewing the 2700 because there's a marked difference between the 2700X and the 2700. You're getting significantly better clock speeds with the 2700X and a much better cooler, which is almost worth the $30 difference alone. Now that is if you aren't planning on using a liquid cooling solution, but all in all the 2700X is the significantly better choice because you're not risking getting worse clocks. Now you can go with the 2700 and you can overclock it to the speeds of the 2700X, but it's not guaranteed so I would really go for spending the extra $30 and going for the 2700X. Now we will be using the Corsair H150i for all of these tests, but we will not be actually overclocking them in this particular video. We will be doing that in a future video and showing off all the benchmarks for that. But for this particular video, we want to show off all the base clocks so that you knew what you would expect getting into it. Now, all of these tests will be done on the exact same system. We will be using an X470 motherboard from MSI, which is right behind me. It's a very good motherboard and I highly recommend Recommend it. We'll also be using a GTX 1080 Ti, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM clocked at 3600 megahertz, and otherwise we're going to be using an operating a fresh install of Windows on an SSD to keep everything exactly the same. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the benchmarks. As you can see, there is a nice increase in performance in the second generation Ryzen CPUs from the first generation. Now, I don't know if it's a big enough increase to actually warrant upgrading from, say, a 1700X or an 1800X to the 2700X. Um, but if you're running something like maybe like the 1600 and then upgrading to the 2700X or the 2700, then that would definitely be a good idea because you'll see a big difference in performance if you're doing that. But otherwise, if you're running something like the 1800X or the 1700X, then maybe upgrading might not be worth it. But if you really want to get the most out of the Ryzen CPUs, then upgrading to the new generation is definitely going to be good. You'll also see a little bit better performance in gaming because the single core performance is slowly catching up to Intel. Although if you are going for a strict gaming build only, obviously going with an Intel chip is still going to be your best choice. Now that's not to say the Ryzen second generation CPUs aren't good for gaming. They definitely are and they have seen an improvement in gaming performance over the first generation CPUs. Now the main benefit of the Ryzen second generation chips or Ryzen chips in general is your ability to multitask heavily with them. So if you do plan on doing more multitasking stuff like being able to stream and watch TV and stuff like that while on the computer while playing games, then obviously using the AMD chips is going to be a major benefit. But that being said, the chips are very good and we did run all of these tests with the chips all at their stock frequencies. Now we will be doing separate videos for overclocks and the first video that we're going to be doing on that is going to be the 2700X. 
overclocked as well as overclocking it for gaming and stuff like that with the GPU just to see how much performance we can get out of the system with a 2700X and a 1080 Ti. Now just like the first generation Ryzen CPUs, the second generation does not have a lot of room for overclocking and that's why I really thought the 2700X was the better choice uh, because you really don't need a liquid cooler with them. The actual stock cooler that it comes with is very very good for the chips especially since you really can't overclock them but when you do start overclocking them they do heat up quite a bit so if you do plan on overclocking the Ryzen chips trying to push them to their limits you are definitely going to need a water cooling solution for that but I hope you guys all enjoyed this video trying to make these a little quick just to get straight to the point and I hope you guys like that format for these particular videos now we will also be doing a bunch of builds we've got some really high-end builds coming we're going to be testing this with a 1080 Ti SLI as well as some lower end builds um, for you know cheap streaming maybe for Fortnite and stuff like that so if you guys want to see those don't forget to subscribe and if you did like the video and or found it useful don't forget to share support and smash that like button We'll see you in the next one.